that you know isn't very good to, so that you can crush them with your strategies, because it's not a map that's easy to plug whatsoever, even on the CT side. Yeah. Well, we'll see how, I mean, EFRAG, starting on the CT side here, but known for their ridiculous entries on the T side, I still feel like it is a bit harder on Inferno to find those entries. That's the thing. Like, working a pick solo is extremely difficult on T side. Sometimes you have teams like Envy who will, like, go up mid with uh, two players and then peak Arch and Boiler at the same time. Try to work a pick that way, but most of the time you're sitting in front of smoke waiting for it to dissipate and then executing. Yeah, or, you know, just waiting for another smoke to come down and then waiting for that one to go away and then another smoke to come down. And yeah. A lot of choke points, a lot of good smoke work from the CTs will keep those terrorists at bay. And, uh, I mean, also to talk about Envious, they have some pretty complex set smoke strategies going towards, uh, especially that A site. We'll see if E-Frag, well, one, if they'll even need to bust those out, and two, if they do, how it'll I work for them. I assume we're trying to see an A fake into a rundown mid hit B strat, though I'm not sure. Yeah, Reflex is trying to be really annoying. He just wants someone to, to try to fight him. If he can get a kill, maybe force him on rotation off of A, then they'll rotate. And he actually does, but Dreamer is holding that angle long enough in the long apartment, so he's going to spot everything. He'll find that first strike. That's going to drop the bomb, but e just ex <laughs> Oh my gosh, they shut that thing down completely. They try to come out with the waterfall, but e was ready with the paper towels. <laughs> really quality paper <laughs> <Okay>. towels. <laughs> bounty, 100%. Bounty, yeah, definitely. Bounty confirmed here. Can you bring oh, up Ace Ash them and NKL jumping in with the knife. Alright, that's worth it. So Efrag just mowed them down. Like, they decided to yes. go out apps and Efrag was there with their USPs. One on Balak, one on site. Just hit all their shots. Paper towel strat. Oh, or, no. Or, no, yeah, no yeah. not paper towel strat. Sham waterfall wow strat. strat. They got sham wowed. All they got, yeah, Rock Hat went for the waterfall strat and they just got sham wowed. <laughs> We're running with that. So, Tech Nines. They didn't even get the bomb down, right? So they're actually saving up quite a bit here, Rocket. Yeah, kind of awkward here as Sunny has bought armor. So I wonder what that, what has sparked that decision. But from Efrag, we have pretty much a full buy of rifles. Three Fomuses, two M4s. The one thing I like about this is you don't spend a lot of money on nades. And like having nades versus eco saving players is. Or like pulling out a nade can cost you the round, right? Yeah. Oh. Or or a one dig from the opposition can do it as Arte opens things up. Victor gonna be blind, will pull down the trigger, finds one. Does a bit of damage to the Ellers, but now this full eco from Rock Hat's gonna be quite successful. It's gonna be getting the bomb down here on this round, which at this point means rifles in the third no matter what. And they're gonna go in for the retake. Sonny has picked up a Hamas bubble though. Gonna bring down Karn. Or Karen, I can't remember how to say it correctly. Bubble still going forward. Brings down Sunny. That was the player with that FAMAS. Now it's just the Tech Nines up. Oh, there's no kits here on either Bubble or Dreamer. Okay, Bubble able to scoop one up from a fallen comrade. They're going to keep moving on in. The player in dark to fall. And now it's just new box. Bubble has to pull up the USP. Looking for this, and he will not find it. Rock Hat to plant the bomb and win the round with just Tech Nines. Now, I don't know what EFRAG were assuming when uh, our player in CT got one dig and spawned. Uh, Victor had the site to himself and peeked out aggressively to get a frag. He got it, but then got full blind and rushed, and he was a solo man in the site. And I can only assume that he was hoping that players would be trickling into B, but Rokat were grouped to hit it. So I, I don't know if it was a great idea for him to just try to get that one frag when he could have maybe gotten to new box, got a kill, done some damage, delayed for a rotate. The thing about Inferno, right, is that there it takes forever to get to the other site, so if you're the only man left on the site, like, your number one priority is to stay alive, not even simply mm -hmm. trade out. Yeah, it seemed like he got a bit greedy with that one, just hoping he, they'd walk into him and he'd be able to spray them all down. So, back to a force buy now for Efrag, as Rockhat are the team in charge with the rifles, with a decent amount of grenades as well, at least on Reflexi, Karen, and Aslak. But these pistols can be dangerous, a couple on porch side, and I think there was... Was there one lurking around in the apartments? No, there wasn't. It's just Bubble on the other side over at Arch. And two guys, we got Victor and Spy Leader over towards B. 
and Rocket taking the time. It looks like they're trying to set up some smokes now. Arch side to be smoked off. And they are slowly backing off, not looking to make any noise. And as soon as they back off, now with 30 seconds left, you got the smokes going down over at B. And that'll be the last one. No more smokes available for Eufrag. Just a flash up on Bublin. Zarte going to try to get themselves into this site. They will. Very, very blind. Zarte going to get the entry, but finally they're making them pay for it with three P250 frags. Aslak finally brings them in, but now is it too late? It looks like plate is clear. Bomb will go down. But some angry CTs swarming in for the retake right now. Bobble can start things off strong with this 5-7. No, they're going to get double peeked over at Garden. That'll leave everything on the shoulder of Dreamer. He turns it into a one-on-one. -on -one. All he has to do is kill Aslak. He's got enough time. He'll jump across with a 5-7, but it doesn't pan out. Rockat with another round. What a crazy round. Obviously, Dreamer, or Spy Leader, excuse me, jumping through that smoke, hitting three, two, three, two, three P250 frags is pretty unreal. Uh, once again, Vicar died in the site, kind of out in the open there, but the, he also did a really good job of holding onto that smoke uh, until the 32nd mark and delaying, I think, as long as they needed to. That really pushed Roquette into an position where they felt like they had to execute, but ultimately played the aftermath pretty well in the 2v3. Alright, so 2-1 to one right now. Still, E-Frag are going to go for the force out. I don't know, I'm at this point, kind of disagreeing with this. I think it's very important to get your economy stable on the CT side of a map that is so CT sided like Inferno. No, I think their, their train of thought here is that last round they were able to delay really long, right? Make it so that they force Rokat to execute, and I think they had a pretty good read on them. But then also, oh, now we have full A execute. And KL will find one. There is a crossfire from the other side, but they're blind over there with that smoke down. They will be able to take control. I suppose there were like two Tech Nines on one Rockhead, so Euphrag's still just trying to be forceful and, you know, maybe get Rockhead into this where they'd force or save up in full. It doesn't look like it's panned out, and they're going to be very, very broke. And they're only having, this will be what, a third round loss bonus, so not enough to really buy in full at all for Euphrag. No, certainly uh, uh, the main reason they bought there was because the round previous they got it down to a 1v1, so it was very costly yeah. for Rokat, and they know that if they're able to force buy and win following that round that they would earn themselves a save or maybe even a double from Rokat. It didn't pay off. This round, Rokat decided to execute through a smoke, which I really liked because they didn't play Efrag's game, and Efrag's game was delaying um, until they forced them to execute through a smoke, in which case they might have a better read on where they're going. Well, at least this time, a couple of players able to save, and you can see everyone around like 2.5k. We'll call that the average money for E-Frag. See if Spy Leader and Victor can't get something done, or again, at least make it costly for those Rocap players, as I think Zarte probably just going to go ahead and stay on that Tech 9. He'll probably be the one to run around, and if there is a stack, he can try to find it and not really have to worry about giving up anything. Much more appreciation for this buy than uh, grabbing a Galil when you don't have the money. But they, yeah. have, they could have dropped him an AK, actually. I, I'm, I actually, I think it's, they, they didn't want to. Just right. have him go in and, and get that information. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Uh, also, they're more than likely expecting one player to go down in the round. So that way they can pick up that gun, if anything. Yeah, pick up the gun. Like a thought. All right, so Reflex are going to find a Bubble. Now it's going to be up to Victor trying to get real close. Was he spotted by Darte? If he was, it doesn't matter. He does find the one frag. Aslak able to trade him out. Spy Leader has been pretty dangerous over here in B, working through that smoke. We saw the triple kill with the P250 uh, with the CZ, which he has yet to fire. He's going to peek out. He'll spot Aslak. Oh, and he's brought down to one HP and now finished off. NKL trying to make that rotation. Dreamer still over towards A. And Rockat being very, very patient. Not trying to hurry anything, even though it is a 4 on 2 in their favor. Yeah, they, they don't want to lose any more players in this, right? This is their floor, so. And KL pushes the smoke, goes down. That's a free plant. That should be the round. Dreamer can maybe try to bring down one more of them. Force them at least to buy that AK. Let's see. Oh, and he's going to get smoked off in this direction. And flashed as well, just telling him to get out of here. You got no chance, Dreamer. Get to the chopper. Nice. Solid. Or the wagon. 
Always going to try to maybe get one at Spool. Sunny, though, just giving up that position. Tracer's coming through. Kill out. Aaron Karn. Do you remember? I keep forgetting how to pronounce K H R N. Karen or Karn? I just cast these guys the other day when they were still Encore and I, I had it down, but. Yeah, was it another name or is it just another way to pronounce? Yeah, it was just another way to pronounce. Karn? Karn. Karn is maybe better because Karn is, I guess, a former player as well. Yeah, whatever. This is a oh. steady lead, though. Like, Rook out of four rounds. Uh, E-Fragger finally on a full buy. Kind of did this to, the, to themselves in the sense that they four spot two rounds in a row following a four buy on the second round after they got Eco'd. So, uh, a little bit of risky decision making. I think some of it, it was somewhat justified. Because, again, we talked about that 1v1 situation. But now we're, we're paying the price of uh, taking that risk and Brocat being able to edge out the rounds. And that round that they just won was much more convincing, so it's gotta be scary for Efrag. Who are, are playing really static at B, like Spy Leader's always playing this spot, Victor is always playing yeah. right by first oranges. Oh my oh. gosh, I love that. Just trying to get that player at CT with all the grenades. Spy Leader was able to back. It actually did more damage to Victor. Maybe they, they shot him as well, I'm not 100%. Uh, that smoke, though, that they were spotting for does go down, so that will slow down Rockat for a little bit. But already they've done quite a bit of damage to those B players, so if they ever want to work it back that way. And I think setting up and bench there for some smoke towards A. Arch is already completely covered. Bubble still trying to get that spray through. He knows those angles. A bit of damage dealt back to Aslak. And Rockat still just taking it slow, spread out. Bomb picked up and sliding back towards B. Definitely advantage to terrorists right now who have gotten a lot of map control. Pushed players in, C in A back into the site and have actually almost caused a rotation, leaving one man solo and beat as Victor. Oh, Victor peeks up for a millisecond and stops off the flash and he gets down to 15 HP. They're still trying to chase him. He takes three damage as he jumps off those spools back into the sandbag and construction. I don't know if he'll be able to do a lot from that position, just trying to stay alive. More Molotovs going out. Zarte going to get caught on a jump, actually, so a bit unfortunate for him. Now Efrag with the advantage. Only one kit for them. That'll be on Dreamer. NKL continuing to frag. Now Sunny on spools brought down by Bubble from behind, and that'll be that. Three to survive. And Efrag will finally get a first rifle round under their belts. Yeah, pretty solid retake overall. I feel like they could have delayed for a time a lot longer. Efrag, again... Pretty much got outplayed throughout the mid round, giving up a lot of map control. Almost had a rotation force out of them. And then Spy Leader did the exact same play that he does every round that's like flash through the CT smoke and pushing and up punished for it immediately. Victor also was very low and had to recede into construction. All the A players were the ones to get every single frag. Actually, Victor got one for himself as well. But overall, I feel like they, Brokat had the right idea there. Probably should have had that victory. Did a ton of damage in the early round, too. Yeah, I mean, pretty much outplayed for the entirety of that round until it came down to the post plants. So Aslak, still rich. The whole team really still rich. Multiple players with over 3k on Rock Hat even still. So this round is going to be pretty solid for them. However, Zarte gonna fall, getting caught out there on the logs as Victor will give him a peek. Let's see, is Victor starting to come online now? He's only with four frags. Five only being the most on that team. And seven for Azlak the most on the server. So maybe we see what he can do with that up. Trying to open up the top of middle right now, but Efrag playing pretty far back in the site as they get a little bit more aggressive down banana. Again, three players towards a actually Efrag have a great read right now because they have gotten banana control bubble and smoke him down. This allows players to rotate, and because Rookhead don't even know that the bottom of banana smoke, they don't realize that there are going to be four players in A to deal with. Suddenly a great adjustment coming out of E-Frag. The Spy Leader can't be good bait for Victor, who is posted up at that Spire by the Arch. Uh, he gets flashed off. Oh, Arch is going to get smoked. See some players starting to work their way up that porch side. Oh my gosh, Nade, Molotov, full of everything coming Dreamer's way. Three on two right now in favor of Rockhat that is floating onto the site. And Kale tries to stand up in Graveyard, but is sat down fairly quickly in Rockhat to find another round. E-Frag. I can only assume they will be quite broke, yes, going into this round. So Rockhead having a really solid performance, looking to have a great T-side. Another situation, one round in a row, where the opposing team had the right strategy, but failed when it came down to hitting their shots. Obviously, having the man advantage to A is huge. 
Um, but not staying alive in pit, for example, might have been something that you could have asked uh, more of from from uh, Efrag, who had two players in pit. Uh, I, like there was a player NCT smoked out, and he needed time to rotate in, and too many fights were taken. But at the same time. They kind of had to take those duels, they just didn't really trade out well at all, considering how yeah. many players Rokats had alive at the end of the round. Should be and much harder to take A. Yeah, especially when we had three people there and one at Arch, so it was basically four in towards that A site, and Rockhead just took it with no problem whatsoever. And Victor having a bit of a problem with that from Osprey, he will lose out to that Tech-9. Now Bubble gonna move in, he hears the Tech-9, he's like, I guess I'll just pull out the 5-7. Arguably better than the FAMAS in that situation. A bit of a crossfire stack at the top of Banana there between Spy Dreamer. Leader and Bubble. Yeah, Dreamer in the smoke. Bubble finally shuts down the B aggression, and with the Molotovs and the noise being made at the top. Oh, Dreamer through the smoke will bring down Reflex. The Molotovs have actually been really good as well from Rocket as they work their way into these sites. They had the one uh, by the truck on port side where Dreamer is now. They've had the porch on that round. Spy Leader, though, making them pay for their. where they try to wrap back towards Arch to B. Bubble and Spy Leader there waiting for them. Yeah, I'm not sure what they were trying to do. Maybe a little bit of indivision, lack of smokes. So they could have smoked CT out, smoked Library out, and hit Arch to A a lot, a lot more quickly. Instead, they were kind of thrown through a loop uh, and got killed by, you know, one player in two different positions who had a CZ and also, you know, Bubble and opened up that round with a... Uh... Was that Bubble spray through the smoke or was that Dreamer? Uh, Dreamer. I think yeah. it was... Uh, lane player. It was... No, Bubble was at B, so it must have been Dreamer. Either way, another force fight pays off from E-Frag. Maybe it was Bubble. No, I think it was Bubble. He had rotated to B after that stack, and then Dreamer was the porch player. Because we can see Bubble Rock and Arch uh, with that AWP. Kind of the more common place to see that the weapon on this map for the CT side. Uh, Aslak is back to using one as well on the T side to try to open things up. AWP. Solid. Do you know what AWP stands for? Uh, Arctic Work Fair Police. Yes. That's a really weird acronym. Mm -hmm. No sense. Isn't it something else though? Because that gun isn't actually green. Like, I don't know. I don't know I it. Did someone just jump through the smoke? No, that w Oh, that was x ray to banana. <laughs> Uh, no, that's what it stands for. There's just a, like a million different versions of it. It's like, it's always like AW and then another letter. It's like AWL, AWP, AWM, N. There's a bunch. The British gun. I've learned. I've learned things. 20 seconds and they are yeah, right? in a position to execute here. Zarte will get that opener, but we can see the bomb is still very far away coming up the T-stairs. Zarte completely opens up the B site, and they're still trying to take Aegis because they have no time. NKL has got to stay alive. Bubble finds one with Frag as well. Bomb goes down. That'll be the round unless they frag out here. Bubble's got to live, and he will for one more second. I wonder about that. Like, why not? Like, Zarte got those picks at B when the bomb was still basically T-stairs. He could have just... The bomb could have just went B, but it's still... Mm. Barreled on up into the A site. Well, okay, there was one player in B, or there's one player pushing me, that was Zarte, and then there was three players towards A. Obviously, the strat was to go, go A, and they had the bomb running down Banana. Zarte got one pick by the time he got to the T-stairs, and the second pick while he's halfway up mid. So, they were committed to... Well, a, if he if he had gotten the second pick when they were at T-stairs, I think he would have run it back. I guess that's fair. Or maybe still worried about just getting caught with no time on the cross. I'm not sure their smoke situations at the time. That was cool. The bomb, the bomb was trying to play surf maps right there. She just sliding down the stairs. No, what Rokat needed there was an extra 15 seconds so that Zarte's picks could have an effect on the rotations, and then they could have taken A if they were like, you know, wanted yeah. to walk in. Could have been the matchmaking. Right. Would have had the extra competitive time. settings. Yeah, those are the that's the top level competitive settings. Two minutes, 45 second bomb. That's the hype. I don't get excited for this 35 second 145 business. But look at this, Efrag bringing it back and already tying it up. So Rockat kind of met their quota for the half of those five rounds really early. And it looks like they might even get more than five, but now starting to get tripped up a little bit. Yeah, somewhat. Uh, yeah, like, oh, Efrag CT, sometimes it seems good. When it seems good though, they lose. And then when it seems, it seems kind of 
it seems like unfavorable for them. The positions they put themselves in, they, they managed to win. So it's hard to get a read on the teams, but you might you might say that Efrag are adapting a little bit better to what Rocket are doing. Though it's hard to say. I think there there's more to be said about either of these teams in these later rounds. And all right, well, while we have a little bit of a pause, let's go over the group that these guys are in. Uh, as we've got four groups, top two teams of each group will go into a double elimination best of three bracket. And we're, we're taking X amount of I actually don't know how many teams we are taking from this. Uh, maybe like four. I think it's four teams into the pro league uh, from the bracket stage. So looking at group D, which is EFRAG, Rawcat, LDLC White, and SK. It's actually a pretty stacked group. This I, I think it's pretty fair to say that this is the group of death. Or at least the closest all the way through. Yeah, that's... That's pretty tight. Uh, uh, so e Efrag are already... They beat LDLC White 16-13. I'm not sure if SK are actually playing in this or not, because they still haven't readied everyone on their roster up. So if SK is not playing, I guess that takes away some of the some of the death from the group. I don't know how well uh, Rokat would match up to a team like LDLC White. I guess that's the only question mark. Uh, let's actually see. I also wanted to check out who they played. I remember covering them one time, and I think it might have been LDLC White. Yeah, they beat LDLC White 16-4 on Cobble. Oh, Spy Leader going to take the first duel on Banana. On the frag fort. Yeah, he does. He actually bought an MP9 knowing that Rokat was dead. Oh. 600 bucks. Headshot. Should be 900 with the submachine gun. <laughs> gun that's really hard to use and you should be rewarded for using it right Stop. yes <laughs> <laughs> all right too much sarcasm so to add some hype to this match because it's actually got pretty good now that it's tied back up the battle for first place in the group as bubble gets a nice shot there from library and now it is only reflex really just trying to do some damages around rook at or reflex excuse me throws a smoke towards b I don't know if that was set or not. Did that land? It seems like Victor doesn't even care. Uh, I don't think it did. It landed in the middle of the site. Yeah. Did it even land in the middle of the site? I think it landed like on top of the apartments. Oh, it landed in the fountain. Oh, I think my minimap is bugged because I still have smoke everywhere. Sweet. Alright, 6-5 for Eprag. Pulling it back four rounds in a row right now. They've actually got five of the last six. So it's a pretty good statistic for them to have. Rockhat, though, back to a solid round. They've got everything they want to work with. They've been good with the smokes, with the Molotovs, especially clearing out, you know, spaces with those Molotovs without having to put themselves in danger. Uh, it's just, you know, starting in round eight, nine, and actually the last few, they've just been taking a really long time about it. Things kind of started going south in round nine where they ran out of time. And Victor even still with the FAMAS over here at B. Still Victor and Spy Leader playing that same exact setup over at B. And wow. Bubble, though, getting aggressive off that arch side, will find Reflex, and now top of mid to be smoked. So early man advantage for Efrag. I, I expect this to be very hard to, to deal with. That is Bubble, and because this op is starting to have like a really high impact, and that might be the adjustment that is the nail in the coffin for Rokat these future rounds. Like they were just starting to lose, not uh, not being able. To, they were they weren't fi able to figure out how to deal with just the rifle setup of Efrag like later in the last few rounds and now they've got an off to deal with and opening picks are being made so yeah that's gonna make things quite a bit harder also he might be the nail in that metaphor i feel like switching it over to the t side victor with only four kills now if he starts to uh do what he normally does on the t side he could be the hammer completely close it out only time will tell raw cat while not having a great chance on round 12 i could realistically see them still getting another round or two that really would be late that. execute here. Spy yeah. leader flash to his once again. Well, Zarte will find the entry. He's been good at those at B. We can see Victor positioning himself well behind the smoke in the dark spot. He's going to jump his way through to be brought down immediately. And they will get the bomb down with about three seconds to spare. It's a four on three post plant from Rawcat's perspective. NKL trying to work his way up banana. We'll find anybody he does. And he also goes down. 
That looking like Rock Hat's round as now it's only Bubble with that op. Off without the team to support it. It's gonna be a little bit more difficult here for Bubble. And also money, maybe not too amazing over there on the side of E Frank. He'll get a quick leg onto Aslak, just still trying to stay alive. Force everyone to go down with the bomb. He'll pull out the tech nine that he does have. He'll find one. Still 14 bullets. But does he live? No, he will not live from that position. He goes down, and the Rio of Rock had to escape. They'll also go back and pick up that AWP. Yeah, Karn gonna bring that one into the next round. Yeah, you probably really need to figure out their B setup because spy leaders every single round. Whenever there's an execute, Rook Hat will range the last 20 seconds. They might fight for Mag Patrol. If they go A, they'll most likely lose. If they go B and Spy Leader doesn't get some crazy frag through that smoke, he's going to get instantly punished. And every round he does that, it becomes more and more obvious. Last opportunity mm -hmm. for him to actually do that. I mean, he threw a flash, you know, and they just turned around. No one was blind, and they just destroyed him. And then also Victor is not having a great game, so leaving him solo on the site is probably not a good idea. Yeah, they played the same setup. Just one right there with the smoke to check it and smoke, and then... Uh, if, if they spot anybody, then the other person kind of just hanging around first orange is peeking out. They could easily just switch the positions a little bit. Get in uh, Zarte's head, but let's see, we've got Sunny this time getting an entry. The spy later pushes that smoke again. <laughs> he stole the man in the site, and he was playing, he was playing CP. I, but they went fast through his smoke, so I, I assume, you know, he thought he could delay longer than that, at the very yeah. least, but at the same time, I mean... That's a little irresponsible, I feel like. Oh, Sunny. Trying to terrorize him. Does find two on the round. Three on three as Bubble will even it up. Aslak, though, playing from Banana with that op. Gonna get one. Maybe another over the smoke. No, it's actually gonna be Bubble. And it's like Dreamer got the right idea. Oh, but he can't capitalize on it. He didn't know where it was. And he's gonna get them both. So another round here to Rock at. Yifrag's retakes are fairly good. They, like, from... Losing opening pick to... Actually, that round they had the opening pick. It was uh, Victor and Abs got that bomb and spray down on a player trying to clear it out. But Rokat instantly executed on B, made it a 4v4, killing Spy Leader, pushing that smoke. And then it was 4v4. A 4v4 retake with all four players at the other side. That's like... That's tough. And they almost bring it... They brought it into a 2v1. Very close. 2v1, actually. So... Oh. By leader and Victor playing in the same spots as we always see them. See how that works out. This time it is a four spy and they're still playing in basically the, def the default spots. They got top and middle control and they'll be a bit more passive over towards B. But uh, Rock had have been able to, to win against this exact setup on, on rifle rounds. I don't see the 5.7s and CCs having much better of a chance here. Spy Leader has his flash again <laughs> in the exact same position. He's got it just fully prompt this time. He Reacts a little bit faster. This. I mean, he needs like a better flash or like he should just have one that pops in the smoke, I think. Like, yeah. Instead of one that just pops right out wide into pool. I don't know. I really don't like how he just does that every single round. And well, Rock had have had so much success hitting the entries at B. Why not go there again? This time it's Victor alone in the site. At least he'll actually be in the site, posted up off those first oranges. Uh oh, 20 seconds, yeah, he hit. Yeah, slow rotes, or uh, not a lot of time, and now the rotation coming in, but look at that. They get all the entries, Spy Leader trying to push that smoke. <laughs> Why, he can't Whoa. do that every round. Whoa, one more time. And Victor, the... Victor is playing first orange <laughs> again. <laughs> Turtle beat the new draft for Rock at real quick. Next time they go into B, just like, all right, come out, come out of spy spot. Leader's hey, coming through the where smoke. you want to play this round? Spy all right, so you play, Victor, smoke. you play Watch first orange, oranges, offset, and CTU with a flash. They'll never expect it. You're doing the wrong team. I wanted Rock Hats. Oh. Yeah, Making both would be pretty great. The, th the thing is, G play are nuts, right? Like, they had some huge upset wins over yeah. big teams. I, 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 just, I just don't agree. I just can't. Like, come on. It seems, uh, it seems just so, so logical to think that you can get away with that every single time. You know, that round he had a, like a CZ, but they've just been conditioned to watch that smoke as they end up Yeah, exactly. And Victor is not helping either. I mean, he's playing first oranges every single every round. Every single well. round. Like, that's why it gets pre fired whether someone's there or not. 
And I mean, add on top of that, that he's actually just sitting there every single round. They kill him, they turn around, they look at the smoke, Spy Leader runs through, they kill Spy Leader, and they win the round. And yeah. Rockat having a very successful half. On, on technicality, they've already won it with the eight rounds. And could get nine here, as this is the last. And yeah, another broken, kind of sketchy buy from Eprag. This time they've mixed it up a little bit. Victor's out on the wagon! They have changed it. The B set up, and it and it works against Sarte. The very first time they do something different. Probably just coincidence. Possibly. Oh, Aslak. Finding this trade is not <laughs> actually... You get it. It was kind of a messy exchange there, but they both went away uh, play. I guess you didn't do that on purpose. See if he can get one, he will. Sounded like he called him Aslak when he missed those shots. <laughs> I didn't know if that was on purpose. No. Wait, Aslak. Oh, I've been saying like Aslak. You were just like Aslak as you just, just missed the whole spray down. I have an accent. That's probably it. Well, I you've already you've shown me the way. As soon as you missed the spray down, we're dying right there. Victor, uh oh, Victor starting things off. In the very last round of the first half, the <laughs> leader doesn't have a smoke to push through, but he shows up. Whoa. Coming from CT. So, solid half from Rockat. Eprag able to maybe get a bit of momentum. Uh, but now they get to their T side, and this is where you always have to be pretty terrified of people like Dreamer and Victor. If Rockat can hold when they have to play the defense. Absolutely. Um, that round, you know, they just fought for Banana a little bit longer, and that was Rokat's weakness. Now, Rokat ended up going A. The one other round they actually did have, like, a good setup with them lost when they got that four players at A was when they smoked bottom Banana. I'm surprised they didn't try that more often. They just really relied on their sight holds, and they didn't have, like, really great setups to, like, they just weren't, like, nutty b site players that could just defend against a full execute from the site because... I. I I mean, you know, Victor wasn't hitting shots, but also they were playing really predictable spots. Either Agreed. way, Rokat, eight rounds going into CT side. It's pretty good. That is pretty good. Pistol CT rounds can be pretty hard to come by, though. Let's see what Rocket wants to do. They've got a, a floater over there. That's Reflex in CT spawn. Sarte kind of just spotting things up. He will find one. He's got a grenade. He's going to try to take some shots back, try to connect to the head with that P2K, but I think that was getting a bit greedy. And what do you know? Victor getting a couple kills on that last round and now starting things off strong. Is Sunny about to push through this as well? No, he went to grab a nade from his... Ah, that his makes sense, team. yeah. But yeah. everyone with armor except for NKL. You know what is interesting between both these teams? There's one more thing is that they both play like really late round T sides. Like I know that about Efrag. They do change up the pace sometimes, but are very likely to take a long time to execute. But look at this. As like didn't hear anything at mid, so they've got a three stack over towards B and a huge flank from him. Yeah, Aslak coming in, Reflex with that nade, making that payoff. Nice big flashbang, keeping all of those terrorists down for a little bit of left Sunny to get one more kill. He's trying to jump the yard to hit. Reflex, he can bring down Spy Leader. Now Aslak coming in off that full lane. He'll get the easy frag there onto Dreamer, and that's starting things off strong. Reflex with a 3k there on the round. and I mean, even, who was it, Zarte that went down very early on in the round? Efrag just still being patient, holding on, trying to execute late. And it the does not about, work out. The thing about pushing into the late round is if you're all kind of, like, if you have to cancel a rush, for example, like you're all five on banana, then if you aren't able to get on the site and you want to just hold, then there's suddenly a lot of anxiety about what's happening at middle, if they push for information or not. Mm -hmm. And if you're just going to sit there into the late round and not get any information, then what as like that is is what could happen like that's the worst case scenario right someone pushes and it wasn't that unreasonable either you know there was no noise at a they didn't fight for map control they didn't push him back anywhere yeah or maybe just have someone still stay on those teeth stairs and slot it up this hold going better even than the last one as it's that tech nine armor force in here for efrag but it's being shut down they will at least get the bomb down so somewhat of a of a success here in terms of the economy, but they will not be winning this one. Resmoking it and gonna get on the bomb. Aslak does have a kit. I'm not sure why he doesn't just do it, but it won't matter. Spy Leader gonna try to save that Kevlar and the P250 here. Bomb has been just booking it. Oh, okay, I have a, like a really solid lead. I think 
Do they have the first rifle or pistol as well? No, it went to E frag, but they eco the They eco right yeah. back, yeah. Pretty much better, honestly. Absolutely. Just can't guarantee it. Not that you can really guarantee a pistol round win either. It's so true. Pistols are fine. You can anti strat to some extent, but. Yeah. But even that's just coin flipping. Yeah. It's like someone getting two, you know, P2000 headshots. You don't have like five smoke strategies with pistols for a reason. For ESC back in the day on Nuke, that was sick. But even that was just like, let's get the bomb down as a terrorist on the first round. Which is legit, for sure. Yeah. So you can strike on the third, having a better economy or just better buy in than the CCs do. But as that car and setting things off, over towards A, and already just like that, it's a. Or on to NKL with 2 HP, Spy Leader still with 100. Oh my gosh, pushing another smoke! Dissipating though, Spy Leader does get one headshot with the P250. But that's all. Three to survive here for Rockat. I don't know if there's any better than FAMAS rifles down. I'm thinking not. It was probably still like FAMAS and P90 surviving. I'm sorry? The, I don't think there's... The other guns that are down are just SMGs. I think those yeah, there are the was three a P90. rifles they have. Yeah, it might have been three rifles. I know there was a P90 at least. Uh, here's a full bio for E-Frag. Earned it off the back of that plan, actually. Looking at Victor's money right now, he would not have been able to afford an AK with head armor if he had uh, if he hadn't got that plant. So, bit of a misstep by Rokat, who pretty much had a really a really solid a hole up until the point that someone leaked out into the site. So we can see Rockat getting aggressive down banana, aggressive at the top of the middle, trying to seize all of that map control, and it will actually work out as Aslak finding the very first pick. Off of a boost, honestly. Yeah. That was, uh... that was quite nice. So, giving them that early man advantage. She'll move back to watch the apartments. And now Rockhead kind of, you know, giving up a little bit, being more defensive since now it's 5 on 4. They're so geared towards that A site. Spy Leader does actually find one. That was Azlak who was omping in those apartments. So, 4 on 4, just like that, with uh, 55 seconds on the clock. Still quite a bit of time for Efrag to maybe look for another pick here. Yeah, they definitely didn't need the uh, the extra control of apps in that situation when they got yeah. that pick. Now it's a 4 on 4 favors. E-Frag, who are going to enter a site that only has two players, so they are both in pit. Victor, and who is behind him here? NKL working their way over. Oh, they will spot Sunny and CT spawn. Slows one of them down for a second. You mentioned already the double pit defense here, and that can be very hard to... Take the site against Karn and Reflex from that position. Each going to get their own frag right there. It's still potential for more. Moving up into Graveyard as he tries to get a better vantage point. Jumping on the truck. Spy Leader does find one. They haven't quite cleared it out yet. Oh, Reflex going to fall. Now it's all going to be on NKL with just five seconds. He's officially lost the round. Yeah, no chance here. That style word, pit defense, ended up working out beautifully. Yeah, even just, though it was essentially 4v2. Even though the pit defense went like one for one, and then one for one, right? It was two guys, and then two of them got killed. But it took so much time to get rid of that threat, that they ran out of time at the end of it there. Yeah, the interesting part was, I think the first couple of kills were very legitimate. Like, Rokats at the mob, so like, get, get a couple of kills on players, you know, who don't know where they are. You know, he spotted one in pit, oh, he's on this side, watching Arch. They'll land, okay, I'm gonna jump out apps, and that guy on the other side of pit, you know, they have to find him. Uh, but then they didn't swarm them one, right? And then the other thing was that they could have actually planted and played after plant. The only issue was yeah. that the retake would have been a lot easier, but still, they could have definitely got the bomb down. Oh, and now they're just trying to waterfall out. It actually does kind of work out. Three for three right there. That'll force the rotations over. The first man on the scene is going to be Reflex. He'll wait for his allies. All coming in through that arch. Now those smokes going down, but there's a gap in that one though. And he'll be able to spot Bubble getting into the pit, so they know at least one player is in there. And they're going to smoke him off right away. Sonny making his way up the top of mid. You can see through X-Ray that there is a man waiting in boiler, ready to get him from the side. And it looks like that's probably going to pan out. That's Dreamer, and he'll get that shot. And KL from inside of the site, going to get the other two. And Efrag finally on the board here in the fifth round of the second half. Mm -hmm. Trading really well on that waterfall strat. It looked, it looked a little... Hmm. I'm not sure, you know, it, it didn't seem like it would work completely coming out, but they ended up getting uh, 
Kills two for two, I think, right? 3v3 as I got the bomb down. Yeah. And then smoke everything off, played it pretty standard. Kind of risky coming on apps in this game, but uh, yeah, they did it well. Yeah, definitely up against the rifles. Although, it's still all right. If you if you time it where you can get your players up to that porch side and have the porch hit first, then picking up apartment becomes a lot easier. Mm -hmm. And it seems like they did pull that off pretty well. Reamer oh, they over here. They had a split too. Yeah, they, they split it apartment to porch side. Either 3 2 or 2 3. And then even for the post map, they left one in Boiler that was Dreamer, who then flanked one of the, the retakers, which was quite nice. He didn't even get to shoot a bullet on retake, and Dreamer getting a shot onto Azlak through the crack there. And it makes sense what Rockhead are doing right now with the pistols, trying to get into apartments, those close quarters where they can kill one or two, just like Karn did there, and get a gun. Unfortunately, it didn't happen at the start. It happened when he was the last one up and already flanked from the other side. I wonder how much of this game will be E-Frag. Uh, destroying the economy of Rocat, who are going to be buying here, uh, but it's a slightly low buy for a couple of players. Well, they have nades actually. The Thomas is it's not going to be too too much of a disadvantage. Um, they won't even be forced to play passive setups if they don't want to. Yeah, with all the smokes that they have, it'll yeah. be all right for them. And one incendiary there for reflex. Let's see what the op for bubble is doing. Still on two stairs, notice he's smoked off of Banana and Sunny is pushed way down. That's where that first smoke of Reflex went, all the way down to the base of Banana, allowing both Sunny and Zarte to post up aggressive in there. So a very common setup that we see from the top teams on Inferno. Yeah, it's going to be a fight for map control from Efrag, but with this bottom Banana smoke. And uh, is there a resmoke? Zarte, yeah, he does have a resmoke for himself. So once again, going to this 4A setup, and we'll see if it works better for Rocat than it did for Efrag. Sometimes that resmoke can be scary, though, because then if you want to flank, you oh, have to Aslan push your own smoke. Aslan is going to be looking for the first frag here as the smoke is good. I'm going to laugh every time you say his name. Uh, that's one for one over on the arch side. Reflex, so you're going to get smoked off. And wow, Efrag coming out of those apartments. Telling these uh, CTs to get off their lawn. That'll be them into the double digits, so this map is looking like it's going to go the distance here as Efrag now taking... This will be three in a row for them on the T side. And the money to be completely broken here unless Sunny and Zarte can save. That was a more than unfortunate round for Rokat, who had a 4A setup just as Efrag were about to execute, and so we're fully ready for it. Maybe... The, and the same thing happened in, in the last half uh, to Efrag. I wonder if you just get too reliant on your teammates to get kills when you know they're coming to your site or not, but that's definitely no excuse. Terrorists win. Well, Sunny and Zarte are able to hold on to a few guns. Let's see that money situation. Not good. I don't think they should buy anything. Oh. No, not at all. Uh, they got loss bonus. I mean, they'll be able to buy next round. Like, they... Yeah. They could force if they wanted to, but there's no reason for them to. All right, a couple upgraded pistols coming out for the guys without the rifles. Let's see where they want to put them. Uh, our man Sunny at the top of mid with that Famas, and Zarte still over at B. So it's a bit of a, a bit of an A stack. Zarte holding a side solo with that M4 from, I guess, like a one, if you're lucky, maybe two kill position. One that we've already seen played a lot, and the smoke actually. A bit ruined. I think that'll leave a gap. Yeah, it does because that malt of it went down. So that one smoke kind of wasted, but it doesn't really matter. As we can see what Efrag are doing, just completely spread out. I wonder if Sunny wants to re-smoke Banana over again. Force him into an AX cube. Yeah, it looks like he might. Oh no, actually using the smoke on mid. Like, I mean, if you have four players at A and you're on like a, a force up, I, I still don't understand why... Oh my god. That was just a random spam through the smoke bubble and caught him. That's huge. But I, I just don't understand why you would want to smoke off the site that you want them to go to. Yeah, exactly. If anything, just buy all smokes and just keep smoking the top of banana from art. So the other team's like, hey, they've got five people at B. Let's go A. Yeah, it's like the best eco strat that Titan have. They just cycle the smoke from art. Yeah. It'd be pretty effective. But they found that pick at the top of mid. They swung it back to B. Where they actually now are getting in a bit of trouble. Efrag here getting brought down in these crossfires. Two on two. Big HP advantage though to Efrag. 
Reflexi, however, in the pit. He won't take that first low percentage shot. He'll wait for them to get up, but now planting in a spot where he can't actually do any damage from. And Spy Leader, oh, he didn't actually see him, so he knows where they all are, but he can't find a good shot, and he misses that one. Spy Leader to find two, and honestly, I feel like Reflex did play that correctly. Just a little unfortunate, I think. Yeah, for sure. He could have risked it and try to get the deny the bomb plant, but might have got traded out and then put in a 1v1 with the bomb going down 100%. And his teammate being very low, so like him staying alive is probably a good idea. Obviously, can line up the shot. That's what it comes down to, sometimes. Uh, but Rocat, uh, like uh, in that position, like had E frag in the palm of their hand. He got them going back to A with three or four players there. And even though Eco, I think expected to win that. Bye leader getting pretty low here. As he tries to work up banana. Five on five, they're re-smoking, but I think the Terrorists, yeah, I think they were in front of that, and that'll go one for one. The trade on on Sunny's Arte playing first, Oranges is able to get one as they try to push that incendiary. Bubble just goes up on the ledge and pushes through, and he gets through with, uh... But actually, no, he does finally fall. Reflex, he brought him in. But three on two now, advantage to the CTs as they look for their... Wow, it's a streak of four in a row now for Efrag, so this retake is actually very, very important. s does have a kit. I think they saw Victor jump in the pit. Karn is so far back. Yeah, he's throwing a, a set smoke here. And it'll go off, but we know that smoke not really doing too much. I like the idea of it. Karn, if he can win the duel, which he doesn't, Dreamer will take it, and that'll tie it right back up. If they had won was... that duel, there were two kits right there. Dreamer just passed them. Was that not called that he killed him from Fountain? Like he just like looked at Newbox immediately. I mean, Newbox is mollied. Yeah, Dark no, no, but smoke. Dreamer got a frag from that spot and just sat yeah. there. And he knew where, he, like, you have death cam, so why is it called that he's standing there at Fountain? Not sure. There's a bit of confusion sure going on. See, but... Sometimes death cam does just look at the ground. Also, Rokat were really... Uh, had, had, I don't know, I, I think they were really a chance to retake there. They had construction control, and, uh... I I like that Reflexi stayed alive, but he could have maybe actually was that him? I know Sunny died in sight. Sunny Zarte died in sight, and then Reflexi came on the on the retake, and then had construction control. Could have cut off part of the site, I think, and looked for a one for one trade. That would have been good. I think they maybe tried to get too fancy throwing that one smoke from Banana. If they had just pinched it all together. Yeah, that's that took a long time to like set up too. Yeah, it did. So Efrag looking for the lead right now, not wanting to run into the pistols, but they will, or at least one of them will. Aren't gonna be able to find that kill onto Dreamers. Finally, are gonna be able to capitalize on the other side of things. Got those players jumping off of those apartments. Hard to hit from this range. And KL does take that one, bubble the other. So pit control of it is relinquished. Well, the E-frag to plant, and now it's just going to be up to Sunny and Zarte. Sunny already spotted. And he will go down to NKL. The other player working through Arch. Zarte versus Spy Leader, kind of in a brief 1v1. Who will win out? It'll be Spy Leader. That's uh, six in a row now. For e, -frag e frag taking their first lead in the game. They actually... Yeah. They are, are ahead, well, and they pistol. have won the... Le yeah, besides Pistol, and they've won six T rounds in a row. Uh, are pretty much in Rokat's heads at this point. Uh, imagine it's obviously if, a pivotal round. Imagine if Efrag decided to do, like, a different setup at B on CT side. I know. It's crazy. The setup is crazy. We've maybe been a little hard on them for it, but I think deservingly so. I mean, the fact that there's only one setup. <laughs> so, even I got more than that. <laughs> Put me in. All right, coming out of the apartment. Somehow, Victor, only Victor, right? Would he be able to get an entry from that position? Uh, he had like four kills at one point on the CT side near the end of that half. Now up to 14. Even that's not a lot. Most of the time, Victor is just absolutely crushing people. That's also because I think we do cast Efrag Mortal Kombat D play up against a lot of teams that they're just better than. You know, as an entry, you really shouldn't be dropping 30 bombs, but Dreamer and Victor do it so often. Mm -hmm. And now they hit a, a team like Rocket, who's going to be, uh, I'd say these guys are about level. 
Not only just because we're tied. Even before this, I would have said it would have been very close. Yeah. I assume I assume Efrag was uh, like could beat them out a little bit. I know their T sides would to be fearful, fear, fear inducing to there you go. take it seriously. You know, like they're they seem very confident, obviously, and for good reason. Even in the late round, they managed to trade out really, really well. Obviously, have a great aim, a lot of patience and confidence. Their CT sides, I'm surprised, don't have a similar tone to them. Seems like the CT side is also so much easier to work on. Sure. Just like, all right, you sit here, I sit here. We've got a crossfire, and we know that each of us can aim pretty well. So maybe that's that could be a good sign. I think. I'd rather have a better T side. Yeah, it, it is a good sign. And a worse CT side. Though it's kind of the vice of a player who's good on T side. Really aggressive on T side. Yeah, sometimes you do have to tone it down a bit. Well, 5 on 5 into this round, about 30 seconds off the clock. You can, oh, very aggressive banana control coming out for Zarte. So that's a position. That's a round winning position right there if gone unchecked. He's got another smoke for it as well. Throwing it at about the minute mark. So that's pretty nice. Kind of trying to herd Efrag towards that A site. And we can see for a very good reason. Four players posted up in defensive positions, not looking to give away any info at all to these terrorists. And without the info, kind of just random where they decide to go and it will be towards a so it looks like it's working out once again rocat proper setup four players at a every single time this happened on this map it hasn't been effective he's throwing a great molotov and spraying one through the smoke oh and victor not able to capitalize on that trade i think he maybe still saw the barrel all oh, reflex actually peeks out again and we'll find victor now as like on top of this single box there's a lot of smoke here Making the sight lines pretty difficult. Somehow Bubble able to get an entry while he was somewhat blind. He's starting to hop off that balcony now. Sunny's gonna fall two on two. HP about even now, just one. Zarte, the only member up on Rockat. He's the one at the base of Banana. He does find the first frag. Eight bullets here in the mag. Only gonna take one to Bubble, who is on 10 HP behind that spammable box. And <laughs> well, there you go. Too easy for Zarte. Knocks him down. I don't know how e frag are trading out so well. Uh, on these A takes, that, that player, do. there was a little bit of whipping on the player in the site. Yeah, uh, that allowed them to come as close as they did to winning that round. It did come down to a one v two Zarte. Though on the quick rotation, the B player, the solo B player of the round, was able to win it. Uh, and that's the kind of play they need. But because Rocat have won a round in the middle of seven round losses, if they lose this, it's over. I mean, it's going to match point, but they're so poor that. It won't, like, they, it, it's going to, for the 16th round, they'll be completely broke. Yeah. Round 30. Probably, probably That's probably, prob probably better. All right, Zarte here is spraying him down from the spools, so things are actually turning around. And the money, as you mentioned, very, very tight here on the CT side. This round extremely important, and it, it, very important to keep four alive. That's going to be maybe a bit difficult, but with a solid flash there, I don't know if Zarte realizes that the bomb is down that far into the site. No, he did not. Completely caught off guard by Spy Leader. I think Reflex, does he grab one through that smoke there? He did. Found the head of Dreamer, so three on two going in for the retake here. Spy Leader at New Box Bubble over there in Trash. Waiting for anyone to push through the smoke. Actually, smoke will dissipate, so he's just gonna have to hit the shots, and he won't. Reflex will bring him down. Now, only Spy Leader. He's got time on his side. He brings down one. Is it here? No, it's not. Three seconds too slow, and Efrag will hold on and win that round, keeping Rockat only to that one isolated rifle here late in regulation. First of all, I love that Spy Leader just put that bomb down, like immediately when he got on the site. It was like 2v3v4 or, or something. And they knew that one player was at, they had CT smoked off and one player at schools kind of out in the open. But there's no way that schools player could have could have gotten into the site because they had players on banana. He didn't wait to clear up the entire site. Just knew that there was going to be a 2-3. They killed one and he planted the bomb. And if he didn't plant the bomb that quickly, it, they wouldn't have won. Now the other thing was that Rokat's rotations were ex painfully slow. Like, their, their air players, like we had, I, don't, I think it was Zarte at B, like trying to delay for like 10 seconds. After he died, Rokat's players during CT. Uh, five seconds after that, and you know that all adds up to the bomb exploding when it does. I like this setup here between uh, 
Who is Karn. it? Karn and is the other CT player up there? Karn. Karn and uh Oh, it was Azlak, but he moved in. So Yeah. Just trying to have a player go down and then you're not gonna check this position where you have that mag seven. And even with the C Z, uh Azlak does have an opportunity to actually find the first frag. Might be given it here. Uh, Dreamer and Spider are going to try to double peek that from both directions. Or they're just going to grenade out here at the end of the hall. So geared up towards A. More than a minute off the clock right now. Once again, Efrag pushing it to that late round. Dreamer will find Azlax. So now, man to watch, probably Karn. And that's where we are. Eagerly awaiting all oh, reflex with the CZ. He got down by Victor. Karn had given up his spot as well. Tries to go for the jumping mag seven, but Dreamer shuts it down. And perhaps shutting it down for the win. As it is four on two. No kits. Only 5-7 in Kevlar. Well now they'll get a couple rifles in their hands. Or will they? Spy leader has an angle to try to shut this down. Grenades to go out a little short, allowing Sunny now another opportunity to find Spy Leader quickly into a two on two. Victor from in the site gonna bring down Zarte. And the last man rushing over is Sunny, but Victor gonna find him as well. Triple on the round for him. And that's 16-13 in a very T-sided Inferno match. Yeah, extremely. I'd say Efrag's T side was especially fierce just because Rokat's C T side or Rokat's T side, excuse me, I think could be more attributed to Efrag's Terrible like, C T side. Terrible C T set setups, yeah. I'll say it. You said it. I mean I was saying it all game, but <laughs> <laughs> you said it at the end. I stamped it. I notarized it. It wasn't good. It was actually it made me sad. But it also, I mean, to spin it in a positive light, just shows how good they could be. Like, their T side yeah. is pure insanity. If they were just able to hold uh, on the CT side with some different setups, it would be it would be so crazy to watch. And I wonder, like, why do they not do, like, more aggressive smokes, take that banana control early as a CT when they are so good at getting the first shots on a Terra side? Mm -hmm. Surely it's not that much harder when you flip over to CT. I feel like the best way to play Inferno is smoke bottom banana every single round. Yeah, dude. every single round. I mean, you got so many ways to defend. It seems like when you have, like, for a while, top four teams would simply smoke down banana every single round, fight for banana control, use tons of nades to try to do early damage or get an early opening pick, because that would only favor a terrorist, and it's so important that CTs have that banana control that that was, like, the only meta of early round. And now it's like... Uh, or I know it's it's just different with some people I guess who assume who feel like they can just defend from sites, but they didn't have a particularly interesting or good like site defense. I was like, I'm gonna say, I mean, you, you definitely can defend from site, but not yeah. like that every single round. Yeah. Like All right. Crimson well, Pronex, they they can defend from site. Yeah, go study up, go download those demos, figure it out. Well, that's one of three games here for us today for the Sevo MLG Season 8 Pro Placement Tournament. Uh, we've got another match coming up. I'm sure it's on screen. My fried brain, still fried from land, doesn't quite remember what it is. I don't feel like scrolling all the way up through this chat to figure it out. Uh, so another game coming up. Healy Milanders with you until the end of the day uh, of Europe. And then, of course, at 8 p.m. Eastern, we've got more North American Pro Placements as well. So stick around, follow the channel, follow us. We'll be back in a bit.